Hello, my internet friends. Today we are going to be dismantling the Beodynamics DT1770, their slightly fancier studio headphone. So these have got the Tesla drivers, which give really good crisp lows, sharper highs. Generally, they're pretty amazing sounding, uh, but they do have a bit of a peak about 8K, which can make them a little bit fatiguing for kind of home use. But for studio use, they really show up every detail in the track and uh, you can really see if you've made any kind of mistakes. So, uh, I think these come in at around 400 pounds. So they're quite, uh, they're about four times more than the 770, the lower model, but they are really nicely made. They've got some nice, nice design features, that kind of stuff. So anyway, we're gonna pull these apart today, see what's inside, see how they're made, that kind of thing. Um, well, let's get to it out with a bit of EQing and stuff and you're left with a very good headphone. Right, so let's uh, let's get into these. Let's see how they're made, what's inside, how to dismantle them, that kind of thing. We'll look at some of the desi design decisions, that kind of stuff. Uh, as with most of the bear dynamics, these are built by hand, so they come apart pretty easily. Let's just get those out. Okay, this isn't an unboxing video, but look at that. It's quite a nice case you get you get with them. And inside these are the actual headphones. You've got a couple of cables in there, straight and a curly one, an extra set of pads so you can tune the sound, change the sound slightly by changing the pads. Okay. Alright, so these are the actual headphones themselves. Uh, unlike most bear dynamics, getting these hinge pieces off is actually really hard. So I'm going to leave those for a bit. I'm going to dismantle the headband probably first. Uh, maybe take the pad. Yeah, dismantle the take the pads off. Dismantle the headband, and then we'll we'll take it from there. Right. So on these, the pad hooks onto the retaining ring for the driver. So you can just take them both off together. Uh, I'd advise flathead screwdriver or something slim. Just jam it in between the pad and the body and click and that will come out. So there you can see the pad and the retaining ring. Um, the other way to do it would be just like a, like most pairs of headphones, stick your finger inside the pad, remove the pad and then you can kind of see what you've got to do a little bit better. Just going to pop that open. Uh, underneath you've got the dust cover, take that off there as well. Um, right, so let's take the headband apart. What you're going to need is a T10 screwdriver, preferably a half decent one because you don't want to round off the screws. Jam that in there and unscrew. Again, that's the same size screw that they use on the DT770 and 990. It's nice that they share a lot of parts because it cuts down the number of screwdrivers I need. Okay, take that one out. And then you got this little cover. And the wire is, I don't know if you can see that, the wire is kind of hooked through there. Um, so just careful when you're taking that out to release the wire. It's also got your serial number on there. Um, and then this cover comes off. And just to save me from losing the parts, I'm going to put the screws back in the holes where I found them. Which is what I, I like to do, because I'm forgetful. And I often have lots of things in parts for for weeks. And then when I come back to put them back together, it's nice to know what screws went where. Obviously, I've put this only like there's only a few screws on this, and I know where they go. It's just a just a good habit to get into. Another T10 screw. As you can see, quite nice chunky screws, which holds it all together nicely. And again, I'm going to take this part off, releasing the cable. Take the outer cover off, and then pop my screws where they go. So I, I really like the 1770. I've used these uh, quite a lot. And what's unusual is the bass is very flat all the way down to like 10 hertz. So if you really love 
good quality bass. It's not like loads of, you know, in, in, it's not one of these bass heavy headphones necessarily, but the bass quality is amazing. You can, uh, you can really hear the texture and detail in the very low notes with these. Especially if you're listening to vinyl or something, it's like, oh, it's amazing. All right, okay. Uh, next, we're gonna just unfold the head pad like that. And you notice just that the head pad's also got cable routing in there, so when you come to put it back together, make sure your cable kind of pokes out of those notches. Okay, under here, these sliders. We're gonna pull those apart next. We're gonna just release the little catches. Which way? Oh, this side. Uh, so there's some little plastic catches which I'm just releasing with a, with a flathead screwdriver. That's those parts. What you'll normally find is the headband cable is stuck to the to the spring steel here. You can just remove that. Just put a tug. Um, just going to rinse and repeat on the other side. So I'm going to jam my screwdriver in that catch. Jam my screwdriver in that catch. Let's release those. Lift this up, and that comes apart. So you'll notice on these. To get them back together, you hook these two parts in there and then shut them. Just make sure your headband is going in, in the right place. Okay, so these have a little um, nylon ball bearing in there and a spring uh, which, which press the ball bearing against these little dots which are cut into the thing so it gives a really good repeatable click. So on the 770s, the cheaper ones, the clicking mechanism isn't quite as nice and it doesn't give such a firm detent, but these are obviously the next one up. I really like the, the look of them. I think they're, they're very good. Okay, right, so we've got that now for the money shot. Let's see, the, let's see them drivers. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, just tap this on my hand like that, just to release the driver. Okay, there we go. What's nice about the 1770s and the 1990s is you can actually replace the driver without desoldering anything. So if you should blow a driver, anyone really with a couple of screwdrivers should be able to get in there and remove it. So I'm going to just remove these two connectors. One is the input from the socket, the three pin mini XLR, and the other one outputs over the headband to the other driver. So looking at the driver here, you can see it's a lot bigger than in the the magnet is a lot bigger than in the 770s. Um, you've got a little rubber grommet here that presses against these standoffs inside the ear cup and gives additional support to the driver. So it's got something to push against, which is which is really good. Can we get this open? I don't know. I'm not sure this is advisable, but um, <laughs> let's have a look at the actual magnet. Okay, so there you go. So you've got a big old, big old magnet, which is what these Tesla drivers are all about. Um, the reason they're called Tesla is that Tesla is, a, is not only a, the, the famous chap that experimented with electricity and magnetism, but it's actually the measure of, uh, it's, a, it's a measure of magnetic flux, I believe. Uh, so in the Tesla drivers, apparently there's like one Tesla of magnetic force at the center of it. Which just give, which makes these drivers very sensitive and also very accurate because they can use it. They can produce quite a lot of force to push the diaphragm in and out. But it's very very magnetic, uh, so be super careful. Uh, you don't want to get um, any you know any iron filings or any, anything metal screws and stuff like that. It will disappear in there. So don't don't do that. What well, what we like to do is kind of bag these up when we've uh, when we when we take them out just to stop stuff from getting in there. So those are so that's that's one of the Tesla drivers there from the DT1770. Uh the 1990 I think is pretty much the same driver. Uh, I'd have to double check that. But I think the 1990s is pretty much an identical driver to that. There might be some slight differences in the in the density of the material that they've put on to damp it and stuff, 
but they're, they're pretty much there. And again, in the 1770 and the 1990, you'll see a little pen mark on the driver. Also, um, some other some other lettering here. I think this is this is what they use, I believe, to to pair up the drivers because every driver is going to be slightly different. So they'll measure them and make sure that you get two, which have got pretty much the same readings. Uh, this also denotes which side of the voice coil is positive. So when we put when we modify these and we solder stuff directly to them, we can tell which side is positive and negative, which is handy. Right, let's. Uh, I'm going to pop that somewhere safe because, as I said. Don't want any of the schmoo off my desk getting in there. All right, let's rinse and repeat. Whoop. There we go, that's that one out. Remove the cable. Nice and easy. Okay. All right, next we'll remove the headband cable. Now then, this has got some rubber grommets built onto the cable and it's got a metal stake that goes through it that stops the cable from being pulled out. So we're going to remove that. Now then the headband cable and the cable from the socket, as you can see it's very they're very thin wires. Now I know it shouldn't really make any difference because the voice call wire and the actual driver is even even thinner again. But I would have liked to have seen a slightly thicker headband cable so that the resist the impedance between the left and right is the difference in impedance would be kind of minimal so if you can thicken that up there'll be virtually no resistance and, and the left and the right will have the same impedance but it's, ah, I'm sure they've checked all this I'm sure that it's thick enough so that it doesn't really make any difference all right so those are the little metal stakes that hold them in now we can pull the pull the grommets through and release the headband so again if you break a headband cable it's not too difficult to change the sockets unplug you remove these little stakes and you pull them through all right so that's the headband cable don't want to lose those just put those there okay all right next we're going to remove the socket so you've got the three and a half uh, sorry not three and a half mil uh three pin mini xlr on the bottom there and that is held in place with some hot glue now then, you can just take some pliers and force it out, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a warm up just to kind of loosen that glue a little bit. Don't want to get it too hot because you don't want to melt the plastic or anything, but uh, get it nice and warm. Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm just going to grip this with some pliers. Oh, there we go. It's nice and loose. Yeah, warming up is definitely the way forward. Is it burning my fingers? Not too badly. That's good. That's good, good, good. Oh, it's cooling down again. I can feel it. <laughs> there we go. So that's that. That's the actual socket. Now this is the same size as the Reen sockets, so you can replace it. Here's one of the Reen four pin sockets, which is what we normally replace them with. Because uh, these, obviously with the four pins, you can go balanced, so that will slot straight in, which is nice. And you can use the same, it's got the same thread pattern, which again is unusual, because this is a US thread pattern. And these are obviously German headphones, but um, they must have wanted to use the same the same part, so that's that's handy for us. It makes it makes it a little bit easier to mod them to balanced. Okay, um, like you can dismantle this bit by removing the spring, but I'm not going to because it seems unnecessary. Uh, you can tell how it works, and it's a real bugger to get back together. So I just I just leave that on there if I were you. Um, okay, so we're going to remove these hinge pieces. This is bit tricky. Uh, we might have to freeze them. So essentially these have got an interference fit between the these metal parts and the yokes and they must uh, freeze these first and jam it in to make it shrink down so that it fits nicely but at room temperature they don't really want to come apart. So we'll see if this one wants to come apart and if not we will jam it in the freezer for 10 minutes. Okay, so it's two T6 screws holding those in. 
Oh, I've got some movement. Oh, there we go, we got, got it off. That's not too bad. I'm just going to pop my screws back in. Uh, no, that's not the place to put them. Put them in here. So yeah, so it depends from pair to pair, but some of them just will not come apart. And uh, we use a little bit of freeze spray or put them in the freezer. Okay, so we've got these metal hinge parts, which is nice. They've got end stops on them, so it doesn't rotate too far. They're generally the nicest little hinge pieces out of the Bear Dynamic range, I think. Even nicer than the T1s and T5s, which have still got plastic. These ones are all metal. Right, so uh, they've got these these stakes in here, which I'm going to pull up. They look like that. Oh, there was a bit of hot glue, but it turns out I've just smashed it off. Uh, and there's the actual hinge, so you can see that's quite a nice little machined part. I suspect those are quite expensive to make. There's quite a lot of detail. Let's have a look. There's quite a lot of detail in there. Detailed machine work for the for the end stops. Yeah, it's nice and obviously. Oh no, they haven't tapped a thread in there. They've tapped a thread in the yoke. All right. So, so another bit of steel. What's it? I think those are probably aluminium. Dash press steel. Or is it? Oh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's try it with a magnet. No, that's aluminium as well. <laughs> that that part steel. Okay, so another one of those nice little hinge pieces. Uh, the ear cup itself. Let's have a look at this. So you've got some reinforcement here, which adds to the rigidity of the ear cup. You've got also some ribs all around the outside. These will add potentially add a bit of rigidity, but I think it might also be to do with reflections of the sound inside. If you can kind of add a bit of texture to the outside, it's going to break up the reflected sound a little bit as it's bouncing around. One thing you will notice, this outer part is plastic. It feels like it's got some kind of glass fibre reinforcement in there. So, don't know. No, there's no crunchy kind of glass fibriness. It doesn't seem to have any markings for what the plastic is. Yeah, some kind of hard plastic, obviously. It's a bit thicker than uh, than the DT770 ear caps, which occasionally crack, so that's, that's a good thing. And then this part is metal, so they can paint it and then laser off probably this, this section um, to put the text on there. So that gives it like a nice quality feeling having the metal the metal surface on there. Anything else? Oh yeah, uh, on the side of the 1770 you'll see a little hole here next to where the cable goes in. I think it's on the other side on the other one. No it is, it's next to the cable on that one. So uh, That is a base port and that is used to tune the ear cup. So if you find that you're getting more bass than you would like you can actually stick something over that and partially block the the hole there, which will reduce the base slightly. So that's a tuning tuning tip. Uh, I think that is just about everything. Yeah. So uh, so that was the uh, dismantling of the DT seventeen seventies. Uh, yeah, they're not too difficult to get apart. Nicely repairable. I like the fact that they've got plugs so that uh, people can repair them without soldering them. Which keeps them uh, in use for longer. Again, you can contact Bear Dynamic, they can sell you any of the parts if you break something, if you blow a driver or something like that. You can replace it yourself nice and easily. If you've got any questions or there are any other particular models that you'd like to see dismantled, I can't promise it because it just depends what we have knocking around, but uh, we can try. <laughs> but yeah, stick a comment down below, subscribe if you're interested in this kind of thing and you want to see some more. I'm going to be going through probably making cables, something like that next. Uh, yeah, so anything you wanna know, ask down below. What, what?